Hi guys, my name is Lindsay and welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to talk about what I do in a day as a big four tax accountant. Before I started, I tried really hard to find somebody who spoke about this online, but I could actually only find people who worked in audit. And so if you guys are in audit and if you're curious about the more audit side of things, then please watch this channel here. She's a great resource. But today I'm going to be talking a bit more specifically towards tax related duties. I can talk about this because I'm not mentioning any client names, I don't mention any numbers, and I'm talking very generally about these duties. And it's very important as a tax accountants not to be releasing confidential client information and that's why I'm able to share this information for you guys. And I hope that this is informative and helps you make a decision if this job is right for you. So before I go anywhere, a really big element towards working in big four tax for me is the fact that I'm not just working on one client. I actually have five different clients, usually at a time that I'm receiving emails for in a day. One client might be a compliance engagement right now that I'm working on. And another client might be provision work. I might be doing billing for one client. And so that's something that contributes towards a lot of the stress of people in the big four. And big four stress is a whole other video that I'd like to talk about, but I just don't think I'm ready to. And I think I want to gather my thoughts a little bit more. I'm just going to walk you guys through my day yesterday. Yesterday, I completed a lot of different tasks to kind of embody the whole idea of what a big four tax accountant does. So I got in around 8.30 in the morning and I usually spend the first few minutes of my day, it can be 10 minutes or 30 minutes going through my emails and making a to-do list at the moment. So I try to make a to-do list when I leave work the night before, but the thing is at night after I leave work, I'll still be receiving emails from people who might be working later than me. And so although I might leave work yesterday thinking, oh, okay, I'll work on this work paper, I might come back to work the next morning with a new email that says, hey, do this invoice pronto. I always read my emails first to make sure that I'm prioritizing the right items and being the most helpful that I can be towards my team. So after I check my emails, I really begin my day and I started with item number Number one that us tax accountants do very often and that is trainings. Tax rules are always changing and with a new tax reform there are many new complex elements to the tax code that we have to worry about. An example of that would be 163J and that is a cap on the amount of interest that businesses can deduct. So we had an hour long training yesterday from nine to 10 and we all just sit in a conference room and we talk about these new elements of the tax reform. So one of them was 163J. We've also spoken about FDII or guilty. And these are all just deductions or credits or new elements of the tax reform. So trainings are a very frequent part of my life in the big four. Item number two that us tax accountants do very often is tax compliance. And compliance is basically finding things and being compliant with the IRS. And so the first part of tax compliance is they'll give us a trial balance. This could be maybe 10 line items or it could be hundreds. It totally depends on the size of the client. And I end up taking that trial balance and I'll put it into a new Excel sheet and it will have a lot of formulas already in it and we'll compute the balance sheet, we'll make their taxable income, we'll calculate a lot of book to tax differences. And you would think that this would be very easy, but a lot of the time formulas don't work. They're glitches in the system and I have to manually code these items. For example, say the cash account, it should be flowing in through this line. Maybe it's not and I have to redo the formula. And so this is where Excel knowledge comes really into play here. Yesterday I used VLOOKUP about a million times. Some if functions are very helpful and I actually had to figure out how to use an if error function along with a VLOOKUP all in one cell. So that was a lot. Once we input all of that information into the work paper, sometimes I'll be the one who has to email out to other people, hey, will you put this information in this huge Excel file and put it into our filing system, which will end up making the extension or the return. Final elements of tax compliance is making either an extension or return form because you're being compliant with the IRS rules. So after we end up having those forms done, we have to review it, we'll compare it to the prior year in PDF. And this is something that can be a sum of either five hours and we have to, we can do it ourselves or it can take days to do because some trial balances and some um, returns are so complex. At the end of the day, it all really depends on the clients. Another thing that can go wrong during compliance is we can realize that we have missing information. For example, I might have to email the client and say, hey, we have missing depreciation support. And of course, before I send that email, I have my senior review it and she'll tell me, hey, Lindsay, this looks professional, it's clear and it makes sense, go ahead and send it. 
Um, another thing that's really challenging is tying out the trial balance that you guys will likely be doing if you're working in big four tax. And although it starts off pretty clear what the end result is, sometimes it can be very complicated. And the whole concept of tying out a trial balance is assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. So in theory, assets minus liabilities and owner's equity should equal zero. But what if it doesn't equal zero? That's what we're here to try to sort out. Item number three that I do very often, and I did a little bit of yesterday, was a tax provision. And tax provisions are personally my least favorite work. It all depends on what kind of person you are. And tax provision, that is when you're estimating income and taxes for the current year for the client. And so this is usually taking into account permanent and temporary differences. So the client's gonna give us their tax provision and we basically have to look at it and decide, does this make sense? How could we make sense of it? Does this look like it's in line with what they had last year? So I did say that this is my least favorite thing to do. And that is because I still have a little bit of hard time wrapping my head around deferreds and permanent differences. And oftentimes every single provision that I've seen, it's one Excel file that has 20 plus tabs and everything's tied together and everything's interwoven and that is something that can be a lot to handle as a new hire but it does get easier I promise so item number four that I did yesterday is billing and billing is when I have to go into a data system and I pull out information of maybe client x and I see all right, so the seniors worked 50 hours on client X so far. I've worked a total of 100. And then we multiply those by rates. And we're kind of analyzing how many hours we're charging to that client. And then we try to make sense of it. And we say, oh, well, this makes sense because we have this new element of the tax reform that's taking up a lot of our hours. Or maybe we'll even think, oh, we're working way too many hours for this budget. We need to start sending things out for other people to do because we're using way too many hours on this. Another part of billing that I love to do is sending out invoices. And so this can be a range of a few thousand dollars or a few hundred thousand, all depending on what the invoice is for. And I'll usually end up making a PDF form. I'll give it to my senior and she'll say, oh, will you change this word here? And then I'll change it, send her back the PDF. And then she'll say, that looks great, Lindsay. Will you finalize it and send it out to the head of this engagement to give to the client. I like doing invoices because it's very clean cut, black and white, and I like to say that it's kind of an easy win and those are always very nice to have during work. So item number five is administrative items and I'm getting closer to the end of my list here and I'm going to be heading towards work soon thankfully. And administrative items are making things like engagement letters, we might have to set up a charge code for clients, we might have to make a T letter that goes to the client. It's just kind of little things like this that kind of help get the ball rolling with the client. So making an engagement letter is basically making a letter to the client that's defining what the engagement will be. You'll also have a statement of work that you might be making. Thankfully there are a lot of systems that automate this process because engagement letters can end up being many pages long. So having all this automation, a really big thing in tax accounting is what makes our days a lot easier. So another admin item I was doing yesterday was I was setting up charge codes for a new client engagement that we were doing. So it's basically a code that we're gonna be able to charge when say I do two hours of work for that client. All right guys, last item, very big for tax accountants, especially in the big four. I do this every day and I should do it every day. And that is tracking my time. At the end of the day, I need to specify, okay, so I did five hours in client A. I worked maybe a half an hour on client B. I did 0.3 hours on client C, and then the rest of my hours were on client D. And by differentiating and splitting up the time that I do working on each client, it is very important because that is how we track and budget how many people we need on engagement. So time tracking, I have to do it throughout the day because I can't just look in hindsight and be like, oh, I did eight hours on client B. I need to remember exactly how many minutes that I did on every single little project that I did. And that's how I end my day. Some people do their time at the beginning of the next day, but I just like to get it over with and it's a nice way to close out my full day. So I hope that I gave you guys a little bit more information on what us tax accountants do at the big four. This is just a day in my my life and that was yesterday it wound up being around 10 or so hours actually I wound up expensing dinner because I worked late but of course everybody's experience is very different and I hope this proves to be a very useful video 
for you guys and I just don't think there are enough resources of people who are new in the big four and are just reflecting and outputting this information. So at the end of the day, if you guys learned anything, a lot of it is making Excel files and making PDF files and getting them approved. So thanks guys so much for watching this video. Please excuse the construction outside. They're redoing my stairs today. So everybody have a great day and wish me luck at work. Very glad it's Friday. Bye.